Okay, so we start the class. So first few announcements. So tomorrow we have um, the the award cer ceremony in mathematics department. So um, I have to move the office hours. So the office hour will be 1.30 to 2.15. So just um, one hour and 15 minutes earlier. So just tomorrow only. And final project plans that I have commented on final projects on April 19th and 24th. So you should have um, obtained the comments if you are going to make a presentation on 19th or 24th. So May 1st, I, I will comment on it sometime soon, but I haven't done that yet. If you have specific concerns, you can email me um, to expedite it. But the, um, so far, uh, I haven't done that yet. <coughs> yeah, and today uh, I would like to discuss neural networks. There's still we have some quizzes. Then um, probably on um, Wednesday and maybe next Monday that we discuss the uh, lab session for chapter 10. I just uploaded chapter 10 slides a few minutes ago. So chapter 10, the, um, we cover most sections. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I, I want to mention that. Uh, I, I, I want to mention that the neural network that we need the um, some packages and which is uh, more difficult to install compared to usual packages. So maybe uh, I will be asking you to install it um, as a quiz. Um, it depends. Uh, yeah, maybe we discuss it uh, later. So chapter 10 is deep learning, but actually this is just neural network. So deep learning is the neural network with more layers. So a kind of a, a more complicated version of neural network. But the point is that as structure gets more difficult, uh, more complicated, the, actually the, we have fewer number of parameters to optimize. So that is, the, I think, the idea of the deep learning. OK, so overview. Um, the neural network, the, I think I heard of it many years ago, and it became popular in 1980s. And its mathematical st structure somewhat mimics the human brain, but their resemblance is often overstated. So the idea is we have nodes, and the, we have many nodes, and the, we think about the some input, then the relationship between nodes, then finally, we have output. So that is the idea. And the, this structure uh, looks similar to neuron, uh, the humans or animals neural network. But uh, just still, the, it's mathematical model um, governed by parameters. And it became less popular in 90s and 2000s, as it needs a lot of calibrations of hyperparameters. So we have seen in support vector machine that the model is conceptually automatic, but still we have to optimize hyperparameters. And the, uh, sometimes even we have to make um, you know, predictor variables. For example, if we have x1 to x10, but if we include the interaction terms, such as x1 times x2, then support vector machine's performance gets better. So conceptually, support vector machine has infinite dimensional um, feature space. So we don't really have to introduce the cross terms, I mean, the interaction terms or square term, cubic terms. But the in fact, sometimes it works. So a lot of calibration or so-called feature engineering uh, may be needed. And that isn't really as convenient as it looks. So that's why that it becomes less popular. 
Actually, in 2000, support vector machine is much popular, especially when I was a graduate student. Um, some famous professors who um, focus on the support vector machine just um, yeah, the show off this, the ability of the, the yeah, high performance of support vector machine. But after 2010, um, it was renamed as deep learning and became popular again. So neural network became popular again. And I don't know the exact reason. Maybe, I don't know, parallel, parallel computing works better with neural network or more complicated models makes the less hyperparameter to be to be tuned. I'm not exactly up. Uh, I don't really know the exact reason, but it became popular uh, because of the improved performance. So neural network have so-called hidden layers, and the deep learning implies there are more uh, hidden layers. I will discuss it later. Yeah, so the, there are several reasons, and it requires less calibration than before, and its performance is superior, superior than uh, other statistical models. Yeah, especially it's useful in the image and the video processing and the natural language processing. Yeah, so in general, um, um, yeah. If the algorithm is complicated, but you believe that there is a good algorithm, then neural network works good. When we see data competition, such as Kaggle, the, the mostly the dominant models are neural network or tree-based methods. So those two are um, good in these days in terms of uh, forecasting performance. And the difference between neural network and the tree-based methods, the tree-based methods are more discrete. So remember that the tree-based method, suppose that um, we have only just one predictor and one response. And if true relationship is like this, the tree-based methods basically fit the step function. So that is worse than uh, fitting a straight line, if the truth is straight line. So if the a true fitted curve is smooth. Usually neural network works marginally better, but um, it really depends. In some sense, tree-based method is more robust that because the, it does not assume any parametric form. <clears throat> yeah, and there are three components. The one is the modeling of neural network and the other is um, algorithm to um, fitting a neural network. And after that, we discussed our implementation. Actually, until last year, I mean, the, until this year that we haven't discussed, I haven't discussed the, our implementation um, of neural network because we don't have enough time. But it turned out that to implement it, actually we have to cover uh, both algorithm and the modeling. Yeah, so neural network, you have to install Keras package and a TensorFlow package. And the complication is basically the Keras package uses TensorFlow. And the TensorFlow uses um, neural network. Uh, sorry. And basically, the TensorFlow is run in Python. So, Keras package, you can install it into your R as usual, but the also the to use TensorFlow, you have to um, basically the, uh, install the Python in your computer. And also you have to install the TensorFlow package in Python. Then basically R language that calls that package in Python. So that is why it's complicated. And um, I use the M1 MacBook, and the the when I Google the how to install it, the um it can be done pretty easily. So I believe that for other um interface, it's also available Windows and the uh, MacBook with the Intel uh, processor. Um, how many of you are using Windows? One, two, three, four. Okay, and Mac. 
are you using Intel or um, Apple original processor, M1, M2? AMD Linux. Arm? I'm running Linux. Uh, I mean, if you're using Mac. No. No. No, but I'm using Linux or Unix. Oh, Linux. Okay, Unix. Okay, so that is also possible. So probably the, in the um, quiz, I, I'm planning to ask you to install the, a package and the, tell me the operating system and the version and the yeah, processor. Then if you are successful, maybe you can share the knowledge with the other students. Curious one, <laughs> Yeah, and the easier ways to use other packages. Um, in old days, the, there is an internet package in R. I think still it's available. And neural net package. This is slightly more advanced. I think internet is only for single layer and neural net has multiple layers. And also H2O package is a good one. This is relatively newer, but not as new as the Keras. So, Nunet, so basically the, um, so Nunet first and the neural net, the historically, historically neural net and the H2O. H2O is somewhat complicated, I think. And then Keras, TensorFlow. And the speed is also different. Yeah. And the neural network, what is neural network? It's a kind of similar to regression model. A neural network is a supervised learning and it can be used for both continuous response and categorical response. And it can deal with categorical response much better than support vector machine because it does not matter how many categories are there. And the structure is basically the multi-layers of logistic regression. So the last layer may not be a link, may not have a link function if the response is continuous. So like this. So we have predictors x1 to x4 and response is y. In this case, the y is continuous response. And what is neural network? So neural network is like this. So in First step that we basically explain this hidden layer by input variable. So basically uh, A1 is equal to um, this. So yeah, next page that we have the um, equation. So A1 is equal to the HK of X. So that is the G of this function. So G is a fixed function. So this is uh, like logistic um, link function or a probit link function, or um, arc tangent, or um, any, any sometimes just a piecewise linear function. So this is so-called the activation function. In linear model context, it's called link function, activation function. So this is a fixed function. This is, this is the predetermined. function. So if you use logistic link, just logistic link. <clears throat> and OK, so AK, for example, A1 is the function of the logistic function of x1, x2, x3, and x4. And maybe the, we should also include the intercept. So maybe we should include one. So you can see A1 is a, a function of you know, so, so G of linear combination of these five parameters. So basically we have five parameters. So constant and the coefficient for XI. So we have five parameters here. So X1, X1, X4 to A1. So this relationship, so this relationship, we have five parameters, five parameters. And the same for A2, A3, A5, A4, A5. So these are called hidden nodes. And once we determined A1 to A5, then the, this, the final output Y is a function of 
um, a1 to a5. In this case, linear function of a1 to a5. So we have again uh, intercept here. So we have basically the six parameters to explain y by these five nodes. So in total, we have five nodes. So each node have logistic model, basically. So five times five parameters. And in the second uh, step, then we have six parameters. So in this case, we have 31 parameters. So this is the um, neural network. So yeah, so f of x is a linear combination of this. And you can imagine that f is pretty complicated function because the each of the a case, a1 to a5, are logistic function of linear combination of x1 to x4. And the, these are different logistic functions. So basically, the f of x overlays the five different logistic curves. So that uh, sounds uh, pretty complicated, right? So one logistic curve is like this. Suppose we only have one variable x. Okay? So one logistic function is like this. And another logistic function, maybe, maybe just we write in the same pane. So x and y. And maybe one function is like this logistic function, and the other function is like this, and the other function maybe like this. And if we overlay this, we can express pretty complicated um, pattern. Also, we can have the negative one, so maybe like this. So if we make linear combination of these uh, one, two, three, four, 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 five, one, two, well, maybe four. So one more, but the, um, if we overlay this, if we take linear combination of these five, that we can represent pretty complicated function. I don't know what's the truth. Maybe like this. So it can fit the more complicated pattern. So that is uh, um, the situation. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, yes. So that's the case. Yeah. So in this case, I think the function is bounded. So um, out of the observation, the sample range, maybe the it will finally become flat, but uh, uh, still the, it can represent pretty complicated shape. So this is the idea of the neural network. So if we don't have this function G, if we don't have, um, we didn't have function G, then um, AK is a linear combination of XI. Then if we take linear combination again, linear combination of linear combination is again linear combination. So that does not express complicated pattern. But in neural network, since we have this very complicated function g, the, we can um, represent pretty complicated f of x. So that is the idea. So that's interesting, because in mathematics, usually we want to make simpler. If we uh, stick with linear models, if we have multiple operators, linear operators, then composite of those linear operators is again linear. So that's a good property. But in neural network or some machine learning models, the, we have to express complicated pattern. So we make intentionally you know, messy um, structure. So that is the idea of neural network. And AK that is called node. And the number of nodes that we have to decide the before analysis. So this is a, a kind of hyperparameter, but the k is a given constant. Maybe it uh, has to be it has to be optim optimized by cross validation. And a g is a activation function or a link function, um, and the parameters are all. Um, relationship between nodes and input, and also output and nodes. So error function is usually the same as least square. Um, later, we discussed regularization, 
that's the uh, basically the, we use the, this um, function. And the hidden nodes are interchangeable, hence parameter cannot be uniquely identified. Okay, so this model is strange because when we say A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5, it sounds that A1 and A2 are just different um, things. Um, but actually, this is hidden layer, so we don't observe this. We only determine relationship between input and nose and output and nose. And you can see that if we exchange A2 and A3, nothing has been changed. So actually, um, these parameters, the, we have 31 parameters here, but the parameters are not uh, identified because if parameter for A1 and parameter for A2 are entirely you know, the exchanged, then actually the, those two neural networks are the same. So at least parameter space is redundant. Um, yeah. So actually we have no hope to get the um, global minima of objective function, error function. So this is the entire structure of neural network. And yes, this. And actually um, this, Textbook uh, just simplify the situation and we only have the one layer, but in general, we have multiple layers of nodes. So if A1 to A5, maybe we have B1, B2, B3 here, then we don't connect A's to F of X, but that we connect just, um, We connect the A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 to B1, and also A1, so these to B2 and these to B3. Sorry, this one, this one, then B to F. So we have two layers of um, neurons. So in this case, that we have, um, we say that this is two layer neural network. Actually, it's confusing. Actually, this original uh, figure is usually called the one layer neural network, but uh, some people say two layers because we have two layers of parameters. So it's confusing, but uh, okay, let's say that this is single, original um, graph is single layer neural network. Then if we have A's and B's, that we say the two layer neural network, or it can be three layers, four layers and so on. And the, there is a theorem called the universal representation theorem for neural network. So this means the uh, this f of x is a continuous um, surface. Then actually the single layer neural network is sufficient to represent any pattern. If the number of nodes increases, then we can arbitrarily um, accurate um, estimated surface. But the, in reality, that we need multiple layers to get better performance. So the theory and the um, practice um, do not coincide. Yeah, um, yes. So that's the neural network. Okay, uh, do you have any questions so far? So in short, neural network is multiple layers of logistic regression. Of course, the function does not have to be logistic link and the sometimes three layers, four layers, the more layers, and sometimes output is linear. Sometimes the, this last one is also logistic. Um, to make the binary outcome. Um, if multiple outcomes, for example, categorical variable with the five nodes, then actually the output layer have five nodes. So um, yeah, we can just the, uh, flexibly adjust the last, the function for last layer to deal with different situation. 
response may be continuous, response may be binary, or response may be categorical. Yeah, so in short, neural networks are multiple layers of logistic regression. And the several um, choices for activation function G. So one is, as we, I said, the logistic link. So logistic function. And arc tangent, arc tangent is has very similar shape as logistic link. So probably you can understand that. And the another one is rectified line unit, so-called relu. So relu is a function which is piecewise linear. So if we have x here and y here, then basically. like this function. So the idea is the piecewise um, linear function. So um, it's similar to tree-based regression. So the x is less than zero and x is more than zero. Um, we use the different function to apply. So a kind of similar to tree-based methods. So tree-based method, just we have nodes and the um, at each node, the, we change the function. So ReLU is a kind of similar idea. Yeah, so this is uh, just a very specific function, but the, we can adjust parameter. So we can represent, uh, we can express parallel shift of this or the multiple times of this. So basically the piecewise it's uh, linear, but the uh, overall the, it can represent complicated shape. And I think the original neural network uses this ReLU function. So these days more sigmoid or arctangent. Yeah, so some people make a joke that the, um, when um, some people asks um, trigonometric function is useful in real world. In high school days, you study trigonometric functions, but in daily life, we don't really use the trigonometric function. Then some engineer says, maybe that's true, but at, at least we use arctangent because of neural network. Yeah, and yeah, so this is the sigmoid function and rel. So this is a kind of hyperparameter. So the choice of the link function that affects the, your uh, results. And G is nonlinear to express the more complex structure. So that is the idea. Usually mathematics want to make it simple, but the, here the, op the objective is opposite. Make, make it messier um, to represent a more complicated pattern. Yeah, and the multiple layers, with multiple layers, that we can represent the more complex structure more efficiently. While the theoretically, the universal representation theorem, the um, guarantees that with large K, the single layer neural network can express the, any continuous uh, pattern. Yeah, so do you have any questions so far? Okay, so this is just one example of neural network. Um, and this is a toy example. And uh, uh, here that we use a kind of uh, specific function G. G is usual logistic link or L, but the here, the because this is a toy example, that we define the G of Z is equal to Z square. And we set parameters as this. So this is the first layer. So this is the um, intercept, and this is the coefficient of X1. This is coefficient of X2. So we make this function and this function. So after linear combination, we use the function G. So we take square. So if we use this H1 and H2, and we consider linear combination of H1 and H2, the, we put the weight zero for 
intercept and one force for h1, one negative one force for h2, um, we can get x1, x2. So that means this neural network at least includes interaction term of x1 and x2. So it can represent the more complicated uh, structure than uh, linear model. And this is a multi-layer neural network. And the people say that the, usually, if we have multi-layers, we, we need more nodes in the first layer. So in this case, suppose that P is 30. And maybe first layer, we need um, maybe 20 nodes. And second layer, we need 10 nodes or something like that. Then output layer that we have smaller number. So um, usually the decreasing number of layers um, works good. That is the one very classic um, finding of um, engineers. And sometimes that we make it smaller and larger, then performance gets better. So 30 to 25 to 10 and maybe 20 and 10. And the final, final out, output layer, we have four. Probably this is a categorical variable with four categories. So larger and smaller again and again. So that makes uh, performance sometimes better. Yeah. And the conventionally we use the same function G for all function here and here. Last layer uh, really depends. So last layer, in this case, we have four categories. So maybe, sorry, 10 categories, 10 categories. So the, we have a kind of the multinomial logistic regression type um, uh, coefficients. So basically we have 10 categories. So we the produce 10 probabilities for each category. So, but the, uh, so last one, last one is different, but except for last one, the, usually we use the same the same link function, same activation function G. So theoretically, we can change G for each node. For example, even A1 and A2, we can use different nodes. Then we can identify, we can distinguish these nodes. So it's it's a good thing, but the um, conventionally it's not done. Maybe it's too complicated to calculate. I think no theoretical reasons uh, to do that, but uh, um, practically the people uh, do it that way. Maybe programming is much easier. I don't see any theoretical problems, but uh, to have different Gs. Yeah, so this is the yeah multi-layer case. So first layer node and second layer nodes are related by this function the G of linear combination of previous previous layers. Yeah, and uh, maybe even more general case. So these nodes do not have to be separated in grouped into several layers. We can just uh, consider arbitrary, um, you know, um, um, you know, the relationship, the arbitrary connection between nodes. So this and this and this and this goes to this and this goes to this, but this directory goes to this or uh, goes to this and this or something like that. But uh, usually it's too complicated, so we don't really uh, consider it. Sometimes we go back, maybe we consider. That is more complicated case. Yeah, so that is the uh, basics. And the multi-layer neural networks, um, yes. So now we consider a little more um, concrete examples. Yeah, actually that we, add for, yeah, sorry. The, in the previous slides, the mostly we have discussed the uh, regress, regression case, but the, just the um, next one is the more specific one for categorical case. So this is the pattern recognition problem. So this is the input 
one data point, one observation. One observation is 28 by 28 pixels. So that is 784. And each pixel have the, uh, you know, the thickness. So the gray scale from, I don't know, zero to 256 or something. So basically we have 70, 784 predictors. And each predictor has the maybe zero to 255 scale. And the one picture is one observation. So if we have 10,000 pictures, then sample size is 10,000. So in this case that we use the, this, the softmax activation function the, to estimate the probability of one picture being zero, one picture being one, up to one picture being nine. So if we um, consider continuous output the Z sub M, for m is equal to zero to nine, then we consider this function, then this f of mx is in the zero one. So we can estimate the probability. And for this case, usually that we use this, the likelihood function for the categorical case. So that is called cross entropy. So this is the same as basically multiple, uh, sorry, the um, multinomial logistic regression. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so um, I explain, um, uh, yeah, so this, yeah, mm, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I skip this slide, the, um, because we will discuss it the later in chapter 10.7. Uh, but, but just in case, I mean, um, sorry, the, just the dropout. So dropout um, is a new technique in neural network to get the more robust performance. So the, suppose that we have this neural network. Okay, we have the, uh, I don't know, in this uh, um, figure, we have six nodes here and five nodes here. Um, the dropout means when we estimate neural network, the, um, um, yeah. Um, we just assume that the sum nodes does not exist. For example, A2, uh, A12 and A24 uh, does not exist, do not exist. Then the, we only have to use the other coefficients uh, to, gets the uh, forecasted, uh, I, I mean, the, um, the prediction. So that makes the neural network more robust. So if the always that we use all nodes, there may be just a small um, uh, change in neural network breaks everything. But the, if when we estimate neural network, the randomly we remove some of the nodes, then there obtained neural network is more robust and the, um, performs better for test set. So that is the idea of the dropout. But the, to explain exactly, we have to uh, study the algorithm first. So just the, um, I briefly the cover the idea. Yeah. Um, Section 10.3, the convolutional neural networks. So this is a special the case of neural network, especially for image and the video processing. And the, um, this section just introduces um, a rough idea of convol convolutional neural network. Yeah, so the convolutional network has the convolutional layers and the pooling layers. And the convolutional layer um, layers extract specific features of the data. For example, uh, in image analysis, it searches for stripe patterns or the, the shape of an eye. So we have very the specific details. 
and pulling layer compressed of obtained information. So for example, in image analysis, it compresses the two by two pixels into one pixel by taking the maximum of all of all four pixels. So basically we simplify um, the layers. So this is just rough idea. So if we originally have picture, so this is input, x1 to xp, then the, we extract the uh, feature. Um, I don't know, the maybe this one is maybe this part. I don't know. Um, and I think this is an eye. I think this one is an eye. And this is ton, maybe. Uh, this is what? I'm not sure what is this. Um, I have no idea. Maybe nose. Uh, nose is this one, right? Um, so we extract features. So probably we need more nodes. We need more nodes. But um, we each node has very um, limited amount of information. Just it um, recognizes the characteristics of the each of the picture. Then after that, we combine into smaller number of layers, the, the smaller number of nodes. So if we combine the sum of them, we can replicate the mouse or replicate the eye or something. Oh, sorry, the, this one, yeah, yes. So this one, this one, and the, this one, we can generate the eyes. Then finally, if we have several parts that we can um, make the original, uh, so that we can make a guess. So this is the basically Y hat type. So this is categorization problem. Maybe we have the 30 names of animals, then the, we see whether this is cat or a lion or a tiger. <clears throat> yeah, so basically then we have more nodes, larger number of nodes here, and then we make it smaller, smaller number of nodes, then that we can make the number of nodes larger and smaller and larger and smaller again and again. And finally, we get the answer. And um, another aspect is this is for image and video analysis. So suppose that we have this one, then you can see the um, adjacent pixels have similar information. For example, the all of these observations are uh, dark, right? So that means the correlation between pixels are higher if two pixels are nearby. So we also consider that um, correlation structure in the um, data. So that is another feature of this convolutional network. So just the larger number of nodes and smaller number of nodes and larger and smaller and uh, yeah, alternatively. And also that we consider the correlation between pixels. So that is the uh, characteristics of convolutional the layers. Yeah, so original image is here and convolutional filter here um, and com uh, obtained image here. Yeah. Um, And uh, yeah, I, I don't discuss details here, but the, by using a specific matrix, the convolutional filter, the, we can extract the stripe pattern and the uh, horizontal pattern. So if we use some specific matrix here, this image that becomes the this image. So this is a, a kind of a specific the convolutional filter. So this these are uh, actually the parameters in the neural network. But the um, we allow the only specific type of um, you know patterns for alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Then um, we can uh, make we can 
you know, emphasize the vertical pattern or horizontal pattern of tigers, you can see the these vertical patterns are emphasized in this figure. And horizontal patterns are uh, emphasized in this um, area. And this is, yeah, I think um, this is when we use the matrix 1100 or 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, sorry, the 1100 or 1010. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that this filter uh, emphasizes the um, vertical pattern, um, but the um, it de-emphasizes. It makes the horizontal pattern less significant. Um, yeah, because if we have horizontal pattern like this, and we multiply one one zero zero, what's the result? That becomes the two zero 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 one one zero zero one one zero zero then this becomes one zero zero so zero and one and zero so if original image have horizontal pattern that it disappears here, but the vertical pattern, the, it still keeps this one. So the some specific, you know, the set of parameters that makes the sum features more significant and the sum features less significant. Yeah, so this, the convolve, the feature, the, um, the, convolutional networks um, only allow the specific uh, pattern of parameters that to detect some um, uh, specific characteristics of the faces of animals. Yeah, and the, um, the, some other uh, techniques are used for image analysis. There you can see the, these um, six pictures are the same tigers. Just these are distorted, rotated, flipped. So sometimes that we use this kind of um, just distorted images also as other observations. So originally suppose we have 1000 pictures then we just rotate randomly rotate or magnify or um, yeah flip or distort the pictures then we make it six times larger so 6000 uh, pictures then we have a larger sample size and the, um, we make a better decision rule if we do this basically even pictures are rotated the um, the algorithm um, is invariant against rotation, so that is good. It may not be appropriate in some cases if the number if we if we detect the handwritten digits, then of course the six and the nine are almost same. If we have rotate we rotate the, these numbers. So probably rotation isn't really appropriate. Um, also maybe in some sense two and five are similar. So if we flip, so in this case, um, actually it's not appropriate, but if the image um, processing the rotation, um, the, the rule, the final rule that should not be there, uh, should not depend on the rotation of the images. Yeah, and yeah, this is just one image of the convolutional neural network um, output. 
and uh, these are uh, input. So these uh, six pictures, and these are the fitted probabilities for um, each picture. So for example, the, this picture, I think this is Lhasa Apso. This is a, a specific um, uh, breed uh, of a dog, but the um, actually, um, it mixed up with the Tibetan Terrier. Um, Tibetan Terrier is more like uh, more, uh, yeah. <laughs> what should I say? The, um, it looks like more old English sheepdog. So the um, usually the um, it looks like on, almost the stuffed animal. So the um, longer hairs. And the Cocker Spaniel, that is a pretty different dog, but the, um, these are the fitted bodies. Maybe more interesting thing is this comparing this picture and this picture. So these are almost the same picture, but the left picture, I mean, the, up, uh, the upper center picture. So actually, um, this is the um, Cooper's Hawk. So this is a hawk, but the um, Neural network recognize this as this this as kite. That is pretty different. And the great gray owl. Uh, this is still a bird, so it's a kind of fine, but the different species of um, birds. And robin is another bird. And the interesting thing is, if this picture is given, usually people think this is still the uh, Cooper's hawk, but um, actually it focuses on this maybe fountain i don't know this is fountain so it focuses fountain so the neural network recognizes this as fountain and also this looks like a nail the top of the nail so if we think about the scale it cannot be a nail but the, this looks like a nail or a hook so that's why that they decide this as a hook so image recognition isn't very really easy it, and it depends on what feature it detects. Yeah, and so on. And in neural network, this kind of the standardized data set is available. So if you come up with a new um, models, then you can just uh, try um, famous sample data. Um, to check your model performance. Yeah. And um, the neural network is more complicated and more computer intensive to run. So uh, just be careful if you run neural network in your final project. And if data is large, then usually data processing takes too much time. And also the neural network works for very large data. So usually we use the data uh, of with sample size, maybe 50 to 500, but that isn't really uh, good for neural network. So neural network, hopefully we have like the 5,000, uh, maybe 50,000 observations or maybe even 5 million observations. So this works good for neural network. <clears throat> yeah, of course you can try. And in some cases, with a smaller sample, neural network works good, but um, that is the case. Uh, that is a kind of rare case. And next one, uh, the recurrent neural network. So consider the time series data. Um, unemployment rate this month is highly related to the unemployment rate last month, plus some constant time and plus some error. So in this case, okay, so we have unknown amount a u1 to ut, but the, basically the relationship between ut and ut minus one is constant. So this relationship is true for all t's. So the recurrent neural network uses this structure. So a is a kind of coefficient, so these are nodes, but the um, input one, Input is x1 and the, um, hmm. yeah, so the relationship between the xt and xt plus one is all, always the same um, regardless of t. 
So you can see the relationship between x1 and x2, x2 and x3, x3 and x4, and so on. So these are the same. And finally, they usually that we get, for example, xl plus one, given x1 to xl plus xl. Then in this case, the, um, we use this kind of neural network. So x1 determines a1, and A2 is determined by X2, but also the previous um, observation, maybe information of previous observations. And A3 is determined by the uh, previous observation information uh, and the X3 and so on. So in this case, okay, so we have L observations, but the relationship between XI and AI are the same. So we use the same parameter W here. And also we use the same parameter for B. So in this way that we can uh, make more reasonable the relationship, more reasonable on the structure the behind X, uh, the time series, the X sub T. And in this case, maybe final um, objective is to estimate the X sub L plus one, but as a side product that we get Basically, the x2 hat, x3 hat, up to xl hat. So this may be used to evaluate the how accurate this um, prediction is. If x2 hat is very similar to x2, x3 hat is very similar to x3, then we can expect that this, maybe I should say, x hat l plus one is similar to the real x sub l plus one. So recurrent neural networks is the more uh, restrictive neural network. Yeah. Yeah, and it can be also used in the natural language processing because natural language processing, um, like I, uh, maybe, um, I like you because you have money or something like that, right? Um, so natural language processing is the just guessing word, um, or maybe some conclusion, some conclusion. Um, in natural language processing, usually the previous word affects the next word. I like, then maybe most likely the next word is the name of the person or you or him or her. And because you have, then also probably you can guess from the previous information about this. You have um, Yeah, there are a good personality or money or something like that, but the, uh, you can guess this word from the previous the sequence of words. So the recurrent neural network is also used for natural language processing. And the, this is an example. So the problem of the movie reviews. So when we see sentences that we can um, judge that this review is positive or negative. So if we do, uh, processing of the review by movie viewers, then we can guess that what rating was given. So that can be done by neural network. Yeah. Yes, so in the previous uh, figure, the L is the sample size, but here the L is uh, kind of the maximum length of our review. So I, I don't know how to handle um, the different lengths of reviews, but the, anyway, so this is the um, a kind of stationary. So the, um, the relationship between um, AXI and AI and OI are the same. So it can deal with different lengths of different, the, the, we can deal with the reviews with different lengths. Yeah, and the the word to predictors, the, we can always use hot end encoding. So if we have 10,000 possible words, how to make sentences into data, each word 
corresponds to one um, you know, indicator um, function. So you can see um, this. We can use this, the so-called hot encoding variable. So if the 3,456 variable, uh, six word is used um, as the first word, then ju just the first observation is this, the, which is the uh, vector with zeros, but only one one at the, this position. Yeah, and the, maybe this is too high dimensional, but we can do principal component analysis to reduce dimension. So image is this. So each word corresponds to each location, each each you know the entry. So for example, um, the is used several times, but the um, the is actually the third word in this um, encoding. So always this place is one. Or maybe no duplications here. Maybe one. One appears several times. One and one here. One is the first word here. So the first word. So this is the original data, and this is huge. But if we do PCA principal component analysis, maybe we can embed all words in five-dimensional vector. So we have smaller number of entries. And if we use um, recurrent neural network for this, the movie review data, the accuracy is 76%. So this is bad because actually, if we only use word frequencies, basically we ignore the order of the words. We don't interpret sentences, uh, just that we make uh, summary statistics of word, words used in review then accuracy um, to predict the review is 88%. Um, I don't know, what is the response variable? Response is, uh, I don't know, this new movie review is um, order the scale of five levels or three levels or 10 levels. Uh, it's just positive or negative. A positive or negative, sorry. So the binary, yeah. Um, but the, um, yeah, so we can uh, use recurrent neural network, but accuracy is pretty low. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes the, uh, the, there is a problem that the output of RNN heavily depends on the last few nodes. And RNN has trouble to keep important information at earlier nodes. So sometimes that is called long term short time memory model that is used to um, represent the model. So basically, that is um, we have X1, A1, O1, and X2, O2. But we have the another um, node. Um, Long short term, long memory mode. Maybe, maybe I, I can just write the L1, L2, L3, L4 up to LL. L is the length, so maybe this, this is not. Maybe I use the B1, B2, B3. And B1, B2, B3, this, the B nodes uh, have long memory. So B1 to B2, almost um, no change, very slight change is allowed. So in such a case, the sometimes the uh, important information, for example, X1 include excellent or something. X1 is the word excellent. Then the, we keep that word for a longer time. Then finally, if we have ALBL and finally we have output Y, there we can use this information. So this is very um, artificial model and ad hoc model in some sense, but the, um, sometimes the, it works good. Also, time series analysis, this can be used. For example, um, probably you, you don't invest all the money into stock market because there was the market clash in 2008 and also another one in uh, maybe 2000 or something, 2001. So that is also a long memory. So in the past few years, 
financial markets are fine, but the, if we have a huge shock, then the investing all money in the stock market is risky. So that can be also um, modeled by a long short term, long short term memory model, LSTM. Yeah, so some other examples are like this. So this is time series um, forecasting. Yeah, so this is the stock market data predicting the next, next day is the log of trade volume. So trade volume is somewhat predictable while price itself is hard to predict. So trading volume is determined by the previous trading volume that trading volume of the previous day and the previous day's return and the also previous day's volatility, how much the price moves. <clears throat> yeah, so if previous day's return or volatility is large, then we expect that next day that we have a larger trade volume, especially in old days. If you see the newspapers and the, if you see the stock promets, in the last day, then maybe you 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 think that the you know price is cheap enough to buy. So then there are more buying orders, or maybe the some people still try to sell stocks because they have already made a large loss. So that these um, variables may affect the are likely to affect the trading volume of the next day, and the, that. Uh, kind of time series work can be done by um, recurrent neural network. You can see that the um, trading volume and the return and the volatility. And you can say that this is random, almost random. And the volatility and this one. So this has some memory. So previous days, the volatility matters for the next day's volatility. For example, if you focus on this range, I think this is oil shock. So volatility is high for you know prolonged period. This period that has much higher volatility than, for example, the this period or this period or this period. So it's not really um, random. So in return, uh, this does not really depend so uh, on the um, the age or uh, the specific time span. So this point is very large, but maybe next day this point. So almost no correlation and uh, almost just random noise. Maybe trading volume in between. Not um, as much pattern as the volatility volatility but the still the more pattern uh, are done the uh, return itself yeah and the, it is known that the for time series data the usually the this recurrent neural network um doesn't work i, I mean the does not work you know perfectly that does not work very good um, and usually the more traditional model that works better um, actually the, that model is this so just that we assume that the to predict v sub t the v sub t is x sorry the, the assumption is that the v sub t is the linear combination of the some lags of the v sub t and the r sub t minus one to t sub t minus l and z sub t minus one to z sub t minus l. Here, the v represent volume, r represents return, and z represents um, volatility. So just we fit this uh, linear model, assuming that the relationship between Vt and Vt minus one is the same as relationship between Vt plus one and Vt. So just uh, uh, stationary 
relationship, then um, usually that this works almost as good as neural network in most cases. So that's interesting, but uh, um, that is the case. Yeah, so usually this setting is sufficient to explain time series, but the, still the neural network has um, their own version of um, a time series model that is RNN. Yeah, so this is the uh, traditional, the linear model setting in time series model. And yeah, and if we you use the recurrent neural network with the um, I think the twelve post uh, yeah sorry so if we fit the time series model the to forecast. The, vol uh, the volume on the next day, then we have 16 parameters. So we have intercept here and the five parameters. So we use the L is equal to five. We have five parameters for the lag of volume and five parameters for return, the lag of returns and the five uh, uh, parameters for lag of volatility. So we have the one plus five to five plus five. So 16 parameters in this time series model. And we can implement this, uh, that we can, we can run neural network, recurrent neural network corresponding to this. So, but the, in this case that we have the more um, parameters because neural network usually assume the nodes. So the, here is an example of the 12 nodes uh, neural network, recurrent neural network. Then we have each X value, we, each, um, so x sub t is the um, basically the um, vector of the v t minus one up to v t minus five and r t minus one to r t minus five and the um, z t minus one to z t minus five. So we have the uh, the 15 predictors um sorry um um sorry the 16 parameters and 12 nodes and the yeah so for each nodes for each node so this is the um basically the relationship between nose and input. So inputs X, T and nose, the A and the output, maybe O. And the, this part corresponds to this. And the, this part corresponds to this. So we have 12 nodes. We have the 15 um, basically variables. So to explain A by X, we have 16 variables and we have 12 nodes, so 12 times 16. Then that we have 13 parameters to link uh, between the, our objective and the, our nodes. So that is the intercept plus the 12 nodes, so 13. So if we use the 12 nodes neural network, recurrent neural network, um, to forecast this, then uh, we have 205 parameters. But still, the performance is slightly worse than um, just the parametric model with 16 parameters. So usually the performance um, improves only a little or even get worse. Yeah, so that is uh, chapter um, 10.5. And the remaining sections are uh, more uh, general idea on when the neural network is 
working well, and also the how to estimate the neural network. Okay, so that's it for today. And the um, next time that we discuss the remaining sections and uh, our implementation.